Hello, our beautiful viewers, and welcome to Women on the Watch, brought to you by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, we share time-tested principles for everyday living. My name is Wonola Adetayo, and today's episode is titled, Call a Spade a Spade. In other words, forthrightness. Have you ever been accused of being frank? or outspoken? Or have you found yourself tongue-tied when you have a tough news to share? I assure you that there is an answer for you in this episode that is based on the story of Holder the prophetess. Our anchor scripture is taken from 2 Kings chapter 22 verses 11 to 17. 2 Kings 22 11 to 17, and when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he rent his clothes, and the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Akiham the son of Shaphan, Akor the son of Micaiah, Shephan, and Aziah, the servant of the king, go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not listened and obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, Aikam, Anko, Shaphan, and Asphaya went to Hulda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, the son of Hahas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they talked with her. She said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, to the man who sent you, to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon its inhabitants according to all the words of the book which the king Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and, I have, and have burned incense to other gods, provoking me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be kindled against this place and will not be quenched. Let's share a word of prayer before we go into the story of Holder. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to share your perspective on the subject call a spade a spade. We believe that you are a God that believes in forthrightness. And so, Father, as we go into conversation and discussion today, we ask that you will teach us by yourself how to be forthright and to call a spade a spade. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our episode for today is titled, Call a Spade a Spade. And it is based on the story of Holder, the prophetess. This story can be found in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 22, verses 11 to 19. 2 Kings 22, verses 11 to 19. Huldah was one of the seven prophetesses mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. She was also the wife of Shalom ben Tikva. Huldah lived in the time of the reign of King Josiah in Jerusalem. It was during this time that the spirit of prophecy came to Huldah and she became known as a prophetess. This was also the time of outstanding prophets like Jeremiah and Zephaniah. During the 18th year of the reign of Josiah, king of Judah, whilst carrying out the rubbish from the house of the Lord, a great discovery was made by Hilkiah the priest. It was the book of Moses' teachings that was found in the Lord's temple and given to the king. When the book was read to King Josiah by the scribes, the young king tore his clothes in distress 
because he was a God-fearing king who was set on restoring the fear of God back to Judah. In his distress, the king sent a priest, a scribe, a royal official, and two men to inquire of God on what was written in the book that troubled him so much. In the absence of Jeremiah, the king's messengers went to prophetess Hulda, hoping that her compassionate womanly heart and tender feelings as a female would cause her to soften a possibly harsh prophecy that awaited them. But without mincing words, Hulda told them what the Lord had said, which was not a very palatable message at the time. She told them that God was going to bring disaster on the nation of Judah and its people according to what was in the book because they had forsaken God as a nation. She also let them know that God would quicken King Josiah to the bosom of his fathers so that he would not experience nor partake of any of the prophesied disaster during his lifetime. This was because King Josiah had humbled himself and turned his heart toward God immediately he heard what was written in the book in the temple. The fortright words of Hulda the prophetess was communicated to the king and as prophesied by Hulda, the king immediately sprang into action to read the entire land of Judah of all its evil. It was later recorded that no king before Josiah had ever turned to God with all his heart, soul, and strength, as directed in Moses' teachings as King Josiah did. And as revealed by prophetess Hulda, King Josiah lived for another 15 years, yet he never witnessed nor experienced the destruction of Jerusalem in his lifetime. Thank God for the fortrightness of prophetess Hulda who did not hide the mind of God for cheap popularity or for personal gain. She called a spade a spade. Hulda's fortrightness not only saved King Josiah, his life and trouble, but also spared the land of Judah, disaster for at least another 15 years during the reign of King Josiah. Are you someone that has a challenge speaking in a forthright manner, especially regarding sensitive and unpalatable manners, matters? Are you one of those who have difficulty calling a spade a spade? Stay tuned to learn from Prophetess Hulda, who spoke the mind of God in forthrightness and saved a good man from a fatal error. Today, we discuss call a spade. A spade. Thank God for the forthrightness of prophetess Holder, who called a spade a spade and saved a good man from a fatal error. If she had flattered the king, if she had sugarcoated the severity of the message, an entire kingdom could have been destroyed. Many people today find forthrightness unattractive and they seldom call a spade a spade. They would rather call it an agricultural implement to soften the impact. Many relationships have been ruined by lack of forthrightness. Strong teams have been disbanded by the absence of forthrightness. Reputations that took years to build have been damaged by lack of forthrightness. And this should not be so. As we draw lessons from Prophetess Holder, we will answer three questions. Question number one, what does forthrightness mean? In other words, what do we mean by call a spade a spade? Number two, what prevents people from being forthright? And then number three, what are the right steps that we need to take in becoming forthright? So we will answer the first question. What does forthrightness actually mean? Forthrightness means honest, straightforward in attitude and also in speech. Now, it means don't leave your hearer 
in doubt about your message. Your yes should be yes. No vacillation. No sugar coating of answers. The Bible tells us in James chapter 5 verse 12. James chapter 5 and verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. In other words, that scripture is telling us, if you don't, if you sugarcoat, you will fall into condemnation. Fortrightness also means being frank, blunt, direct, and clear in language and behavior, yet without disrespect to others. Because a lot of people believe that once you are blunt, you can disrespect people. That's not what fortrightness means. Calling a spade a spade requires you to be direct without being disrespectful to others. You can and should Avoid enticing words that exaggerate in order to seduce or to deceive or to please people. Fortrightness requires that you are clear about what you actually mean, just like prophetess Holder. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4 says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul didn't try to gain cheap popularity. He simply spoke the unadulterated word of God. Fortrightness is about avoiding pretentious, evasive, and shifty language that disguise true meanings. Many times, People deliberately use shifty language so that you can't hold them to what they have said. Whereas the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5, Hebrews 13 and verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave nor forsake thee. What are you afraid of? When you have the assurance of God's presence, if you don't crave other people's power, if you don't crave other people's possession, their influence or resources, then it becomes easy to call a spade a spade. In summary, fortrightness or calling a spade a spade is about having the right motive in our communication with others. Saying exactly what we mean without disrespecting others, yet being direct and clear in transmitting exactly what we mean. Now, this takes us to the second question. What prevents people from calling a spade a spade? Because it's not that people don't know. But why is it that people run away from calling a spade a spade? The first, of course, not surprisingly, is fear. Fear of being condemned, fear of being castigated, or even fear of being rejected. Because those who are direct are often labeled as tough, uncompromising. So you see people, uh, I don't want to call a spade a spade. I don't want them to give me a name. I don't want them to talk about me. So fear of rejection. Another reason why people don't call a spade a spade is desire for cheap popularity. Desire for cheap popularity. Wanting to be liked by everyone, especially people of influence or people of stature. Contrary to what prophetess Holder did, some other people would have been afraid. Oh my God, it's the king. Let's just tell them a story that they like. But that's not what it's about. So desire for cheap popularity is another reason. you find some leaders, they treat children of the rich differently. Some teachers, they dare not scold children of powerful men. They can't afford to be forthright. Okay? Now, another reason why people run away from calling a spade a spade or being forthright 
is low self-confidence and sometimes low self-esteem. So those who are unsure of who they are and have little regard for themselves. I mean, for example, the spies that went, you know, uh, to the other side to, to go and study when they were sent by Joshua, go look the other side. God has promised us, you know, uh, uh, the land. The, the Bible recorded that because they saw themselves as grasshoppers, the giants, their opponents were big in their own sight. So if you have low sense of self-esteem or low level of confidence, there's a very slim chance that you will be able to call a spade a spade. The fourth reason why people seldom are forthright is unwillingness to lose some benefits that are agreeable from others. For example, politicians, they are typically, and I say typically in parentheses because there are good politicians, there are honest politicians, but typically a good number of them are not very straightforward. Why? Because they can't afford to lose the vote. So even when they know what they are saying is not what will be delivered, so they sugarcoat it so that you can't hold them even when they get into position. Now, if you have made up your mind, that you want to learn how to be forthright, or you want to learn how to call a spade a spade, we want to look at the right steps to becoming forthright. And we want to use Holder's five-step process to being forthright. And we have them under the acronym RIGHT, R-I-G-H-T. R, resist the fear of men. You gotta resist that. I, ignore the temptation to judge or to flatter others. G, go straight to the point, but carefully weigh your words. H, honesty is paramount. And T, trustworthiness, your greatest asset. So now let's look at step one. Resist the fear of men. Now, Resisting the fear of men is your first step towards becoming forthright. Prophetess Holder resisted the fear of the status of the King Josiah. She chose not to be afraid of the high-powered five-man delegation that was sent to her, even though she was but a female. You see, even though she had news that was not really nice to stomach, she determined not to be afraid. Psalm 118 verse 6 tells us, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? When God is on your side, why should you be afraid? Psalm 27 verse 1. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It is a given fact that 80% of our fears will never come to pass. So, get rid of the fear of men. Step two, ignore the temptation to judge or to flatter others. When you judge others, <laughs> you are self-righteous or you are playing God then your statements will tend to be disrespectful or rude. And sometimes it could be condescending. So in order to be forthright, deliver your message respectfully and dispassionately. Whilst forthrightness is a virtue, it doesn't give you the liberty to ridicule or be rude or indeed to flatter others. Prophetess Holder did not display self-righteousness. She didn't judge the actions of the king. She simply just delivered the message. She did not even make a lot of noise about how terrible the report was. It was tough to chew, but she delivered it gracefully, dispassionately, and respectfully. The Bible tells us in Psalm 12 and verse 3, Psalm 12 and verse 3, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. So those who flatter will not last. We were also told 
In Job chapter 32, verse 22, Job 32, verse 22, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away, which means if I give myself to flattering lips, my maker will soon take me away. So if you want to last in that position, if you want to last in that assignment that God has given you, learn to be forthright. Step number three, go straight to the point. People who beat about the bush always leave the listener in confusion as to what they're saying. Whilst you have to carefully weigh your words, you must avoid ambiguity. Calling a spade a spade requires that we don't beat about the bush so that there's no mix-up in our communication. It should be simple, short, clear, and direct. Prophetess Holder, she was direct. She was to the point. Even with her carefully worded answer, there was no ambiguity in her simple response. So, you want to be forthright? Craft your message carefully and with clarity and completely avoid ambiguity. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28. Proverbs 15, verse 28. It says, The heart of the righteous study it to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pour it out evil things. You must study, you must think carefully, but be direct in your answer. Step number four, honesty is paramount. Calling a spade a spade requires downright honesty, especially when the message is tough. Prophetess Holder had to deliver a tough and grave message of bad news, but she chose to be honest. She chose to be non-pretentious. She didn't try to deceive or cover up. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12. 1 Peter 2 verse 12 says, Having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. It is so sad that Ananias and Sapphira, they were not honest with Peter, when he asked them, is this all that you sold the land for? They simply needed to have said, oh, master, we kept a bit for ourselves. But they chose to be dishonest, both the husband and the wife. They wanted cheap popularity so that people would think they brought everything. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a fatal error. There was never a second chance for them to turn things around in the same way. Many people, they ruin their hard-earned good name and reputation by simple acts of deception, and they never get a chance to recover their names ever again. I pray for you that this will never be your path. Step number five, trustworthiness, your greatest asset. Trustworthiness. You see, when you regularly follow the first four steps that we listed, People will, over time, discover that you are dependable, reliable, and trustworthy. You will earn your reputation of reliability, of dependability, of trustworthiness that people can boast about, just as we are reading today the story of Prophetess Holder. You see, what she prophesied happened exactly as she predicted. Thus, her report was reliable and dependable. This should be your own asset too. It should be your own legacy too, that people will say there is someone that I know who will always call a spade a spade. I hope that you can see from the story of Prophetess Holder that a seeming simple act of calling a spade a spade can make or mar one's history. Whilst Prophetess Holder left a good legacy through forthrightness. Ananias and Sapphira, unfortunately, left a negative record, which not only tainted their history, but led to the loss of their lives. It is very clear that calling a spade a spade is not only of benefit to society, but it also gives you a good name 
a good history and a positive legacy for those around you whose lives are daily being impacted by your seeming inconsequential actions and conversations. Dearly beloved, as we draw a curtain on today's episode titled Call a Spade a Spade, I urge you to follow Holder's five-step right process by one, resisting the temptation to fear men, two, ignoring the temptation to judge or flatter. Three, going straight to the point. Four, holding honesty as paramount. As five, trustworthiness becomes your greatest asset. The next time that you have a conversation with someone, do call a spade a spade and not an agricultural implement. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the grace to be forthright, downright honest, and yet respectful and non judgmental in our conversations. As all of us, the viewers, and myself, resolve to walk in the path of forthrightness, we pray for the courage, for the grace to do that which is pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for today's episode as you have joined us on Women on the Watch. I look forward to seeing you and your friends next week as we discuss the courage to arise. Please visit our website, www.shapersarc.org. We would really love to hear from you. Till I come your way next week, this is Wanwala Aditayo, the Shaper, signing off. I'm telling you again, remember, call a spade a spade.